Let me introduce you to my newest acquisition here. This is a 1981 300TD. I don't know if I'm going to call this a member of my fleet because it may not be around very long. Before we get into this video, let me take you back to yesterday when we hooked up the trailer and went out to acquire this beauty. Can you believe it? 30 years. And I'm still trying to rescue these old diesels. Man, this is a sweetheart. What do you think? Should we restore this baby? <laughs> I got Jerson here. We're going to fire this up. The glow relay doesn't work. I'm sure some of you might think this is restorable. <laughs> but it's not going to get restored. Man. But Ken, it's a 300 TD wagon. <laughs> we're gonna try to start this without glow plugs. Well, we're gonna put the new battery in there and then we're gonna use a booster and see if we can get the engine to spin fast enough. You know, it's really easy getting in here with a, without a door. I like that. Oh, <laughs> it started without glow plugs. Well, I'm not sure about that noise. But we're ready to roll this baby up on the trailer. That's good. Yep. I think we'll get this thing back to the shop and then decide what we're going to do with it. Fortunately, the car was only about 15 minutes away, so in an hour we had this thing loaded and back here. And look at that wonderful door. <laughs> look at that door. But look, if you look real closely at that window regulator, it's a recent replacement as long as it's not broken. No rust. It's really good door. Would have been a nice door. Look, no rust. No rust underneath. You know, I have to admit, I couldn't stand looking at that dirty engine. So we cleaned the engine up, and now we're going to try to determine if this is a good engine or not. If this is something we want to save. So we have some tests to do. You can see... Look at that airline for a fuel hose. It's already starting to rot through. I looked over here at the SLS fluid and it's empty. So you want to make sure you check all the fluids. Well, that's kind of a nice sign when you've at least got oil in the engine. But you don't want to start one of these up and run it very long until you've given it a thorough inspection, particularly with all the fluids. Now, before I do anything else, I'm going to fire it up again and let you listen. Now, some of you may say, well, that's just normal piece of platter, but I don't think so. You bring it off idle here, it's not going away. Now, I've had situations where these engines will knock with bad fuel, old fuel, or even gasoline. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to run diesel purge through this and see if that noise quiets down. So you can see uh, from yesterday I wasn't too happy with the sound of the engine. I'm not giving up hope yet, but today I'm going to hook up a remote emergency tank and put some diesel purge in it and we're going to run the engine again. Now, if you've followed me over the years, you know I use diesel purge as a troubleshooting liquid. When you put diesel purge directly into the injection system of these old diesels, if the injection system is healthy, it should quiet it down because a lot of noise comes from the nailing of the fuel injectors. And because diesel purge has more lubrication, it's going to quiet that knocking down. Let's get this hooked up. And let's see if it's going to quiet that noise down.
If you haven't seen this in one of my videos before, let me just quickly describe what I've done here. This is the emergency diesel fuel tank that I designed and we do sell this on my website. It's also a great tank to run diesel purge through the engine. What I've done is I've separated this from the fuel system in the engine. Now this is the old fuel hose that I disconnected. So this is the line coming out of the tank and it's hooked up directly to the lift pump down here. And then you notice the return line, instead of going back into the hard line, going back to the fuel tank, the return fuel is coming right back into this tank. So this means I've isolated everything. I've isolated from old fuel. I've isolated from a plugged up fuel screen in the fuel tank. And now I'm going to start the engine and I'm going to run straight diesel purge through the injection system. This is a 1983 300D, same engine. Do you have that noise firmly embedded in your brain? Okay, listen. This still has that sound of the injector's nailing. But notice it's a little bit intermittent. You can hear it kind of jumping back and forth there. Now watch what happens when I bring it off of idle on this engine. Some of you may have already noticed there's something going on here. I've got some extra fuel hoses running around in this engine compartment. Then look over here, I've got an extra filter. And for those of you who've been around these old diesels, you probably know what I'm doing here. But I have a vegetable oil conversion in this diesel. It's a two tank system. And I'm currently running on diesel fuel coming from the factory tank through this filter through this valve and down into the injection pump. And that's why you're hearing the injector nailing because I'm running on straight diesel. Now, this is gonna be interesting because I'm gonna start the engine up. I'm going to switch to running on straight Mazzola oil right there. That's what I have in a separate tank in the trunk, good old Mazzola corn oil. And you're going to be surprised at what happens to the injector nailing after about two minutes when I start switching these valves 
and this engine starts running on straight vegetable oil. Before I fire the engine up, I want to mention that this vegetable oil will do about the same thing that diesel purge will do, quieting the engine down. So I didn't want to come out here and hook up diesel purge. I'll just switch over to vegetable oil. This is going to take about two minutes to make the switch. Let's look at the time here on my watch. It's about four minutes to 10 o'clock. Let's see how long this takes. Okay, I'm going to switch from diesel to vegetable oil. I'm going to turn on the pump in the trunk. And I'm going to switch my return fuel to bring it right back into the loop mode. The return fuel will come right back and go into the line going down to the jet pump. Okay, right now, we turned on the heater. We are now starting to move vegetable oil into the injection pump. And it's hard to see there, but you can see I've got some thicker fuel now running into the engine. Okay, look at the time. You notice any difference? Listen to that. That's how a healthy engine should sound, right there. So we did this in less than two minutes. So we'll bring this one off idle now. Listen to this. Look how smooth this is. That's straight, unaltered, right from the store, cooking oil. So let's go back to the wagon and discuss what we're going to do next. Before I pull this back into the shop for some further inspection, I want to do one more thing while I'm running on diesel purge. I want to see if I can isolate just one cylinder or one injector that's making the noise. And the way I can do this is to start the engine while the engine's running. I'm going to crack one of these fuel line nuts about a half a turn and see if we see any change in the sound. If we, if we see a change in the sound, that means something's going on with that particular cylinder. I doubt whether that's the situation here, but I at least want to try it. All right, let's try number one. Look at the change in the sound there. Okay, let's see number two. Not much change there. No, not much change on four, other than the fact that it's missing. Same thing there. Still knocking. All right, let's go back to number one. That was the only one that was promising. Okay, now I'm going to race it up a little bit. No, not still there. If you are successful at isolating the knock to one cylinder, eh, it usually means you got a bad fuel injector. Sometimes it's a piston slap, but most of the time it'll be a bad fuel injector. You replace the fuel injector and that knocking noise goes away. But in this case, the knocking sound is pretty consistent. At this point, about the only thing I can do next is to remove the valve cover and see if we have any noise in the valve train. But this isn't looking very good. 
So in the next video, I'll report back and see if we find anything else on this engine that makes it worth saving. You know, I originally bought this car hoping I could get a good engine to put it into another undamaged 123.